Well, good morning and welcome to the beautiful River Test down in Hampshire. It's a typical chalk stream. Obviously, this is a game beat and which opens its doors at this time of the year for course fishing. And every year I treat myself to a few days down here grayling fishing. You never know, you could catch a big roach on one of these stretches, the odd chub, and hopefully not too many trout, which are byproducts, obviously, of fishing these stretches. We're going to be using a 15 foot rod and a centre pin. That is all to get that control and get that stick flow going down the stream nice and steadily and evenly and it's just for control and then as for bait we're going to be using good old sweet corn the reason we're using sweet corn is maggots are banned on most of these stretches reason being is to protect the salmon stocks you don't get too many big salmons but it's these little salmon par that they're trying to protect you don't get too many on corn uh, but the grayling do love the corn they think we think it's because they think it's the salmon eggs um, but it's a great bait you do get the odd trout where you, in some days you get quite a few. We try to avoid them. If you catch them, we just unhook them, try and put them back pretty quickly. Hopefully we catch lots of grayling and you never know, a big chub or an even huge roach could turn up that live here. Let's just go through the terminal tackle you're going to need for grayling fishing. Main line, I use the Browning Black Magic Gold. It's a 0.21 mil diameter, which amazingly is eight pound breaking strain. And the reason I use this is I can actually pull for a break if I actually get caught in a snag. And that means my hook link, which is much less a breaking strain, will part and I'll get my expensive float and olivet back. The actual hook link I use is the Reflo Power. I normally use a 3.6 breaking strain, which is 0.11 mil or sometimes I just go up to a 13 mil, which is four pound 12 ounces. Moving on to the floats, I use the fantastic Dave Harrell alloy Avens, which are, you know, the wire stems, big visual tops, and I can use anything from a two gram on a normal day on a good kind of good river conditions up to a five, even a six gram. These are shotted using inline olivets because split shot seems to just fall off every time you strike. So just for reference, if I'm using a three gram float, I would then use a three gram olivet and then just use two small droppers on the hook link, which is normally about 10 inches. And then moving on to the most important part of grain and fishing, and that is hooks. Now, camasan hooks are absolutely fantastic for grain and fishing. And I use the B525s, they've got a whisker barb, and usually I'm using a 14, even a size 12. Difficult to get hold of, so if you can find some, I would say buy the lot. Um, and don't worry about going down into really small hooks, a lot of anglers say, or a small size 18 barb barbless will go in easier, it will also come out easier. Grayling are really bold feeders if you're the first one in the swim, and you trot down whether you're using a 20 or a size 12 hook you will still get the bite and the difference is on a size 12 or 14 you will land most of them on the smaller hooks you will lose them well the way i approach each swim is not to be greedy when you first get to a swim all you need to do is feed a few grains of sweet corn sort of four five six grains try and be nice and accurate get your float going down with it if you don't get towed under on the bottom just add a few inches depth and keep doing that until the float toes under gets caught on the bottom reduce the depth so every time you trot through and that float goes you strike and hopefully it's going to be a fish my advice is even if you know there's a weed bed down there if your float disappears a quick firm strike to set that hook because Graydon have got very kind of bony mouths so Six grains of corn, trot down, deepen. Six grains of corn, trot, deepen. Keep doing it until the bites come. Once you're quite confident you're just running that bait just off the bottom, then give it six or eight trots. If you don't catch, move. Regarding reels, you cannot beat the control that a centre pin provides. And I have an Akuma 
a venter unavailable now but a lovely wheel nice and smooth um, it hasn't got a line guard this one so I always take my Rapidex with me which has got a line guard so if it's really windy and I need to cast any distance then the Rapidex will give me that option Here's a couple of little tips for you. When you hook a fish, don't forget to keep some feed going through the swim all the time you're playing that fish. What I think this does is just distracts the shoal of that fish being played and they just continue to feed. So next time you trot down, there's a very good chance you're gonna get a, another bite straight away. And if I hook a fish and it feels really big, is to keep, is to first feed and then walk downstream, even steer the fish further downstream, as this will take that fish out of the swim so it won't spook the rest. And the other thing is you quite often get hook pulls if you try playing a fish upstream through a fast flow. So um, bear that in mind as soon as you hook a big fish is to um, pick up your land in there and move downstream. And once that fish has been landed, and unhooked, then I tend to weigh and photograph that fish straight away. And then I leave it in the landing net, make sure its head is facing upstream until it is lively enough to swim off on its own accord. I use the fantastic Preston Innovations Carbon Active. These are quite old rods, but I still use them to this day because they are that good. They have a forgiving tip, uh, which is ideal when long trotting and striking fast and hard because you need to set that hook, but then they've got plenty of power in the middle reaches to actually uh, subdue those uh, extra large fish. Normally I use the 15 foot Excel, which gives you that better presentation and control but I also take the 13 foot rod and a closed face reel just for those really windy, difficult days when casting any distance goes out the window and you just have to keep your float trotting down the near bank. So uh, go for a 15 foot rod if you can. These rods are brilliant because they're also very light so you can actually hold them all day. Remember to check out every likely looking area, but don't spend too much time in each. Trot down a few times to find the depth, feed in every trot through, then make six or eight further casts. Again, feed in around the float every time you trot through, and if you get no bites and no fish come, then simply move on.
Before you go grayling fishing, just to make your life easier and be more effective when you're actually roving the river is to get a little pouch, a bait pouch with a removable inner. This contains your maggots or sweet corn. And ideally, if you can have one with a small pocket at the front that can contain spare hooks, weights, line, disgorges, etc., is even better. And on those sunny days, a flat cap with a peak is really good and a pair of shades uh, will be invaluable just so you can long trot into those sunny sort of spots on the river. Well, another fantastic day on the river test. The mega grayling never showed. We've had grayling to 1.9. I've got a friend with me, Colin. We've had about, I don't know, 30, 35 fish between us. It's been quite tough for good conditions. Um, I lost an absolute monster chub, which would have made the day. But I'm gonna finish off with one of these. These are out of season. Beautiful brownie, great actual sport on the old light grayling kit and the long rod. But a byproduct. Try not to keep them out of the water too long. Get them back to fight another day. Hopefully next time we we'll catch a big grayling. Well, it's not often I get to do a double take for the out shot, but there's always one last cast. And after that brownie, I thought the damage has been done. The lady of the stream, the two pounder, ain't gonna actually grace my net today. So I thought I'll have one last cast and uh, I won't keep her out too long, but there she is, £2.1 ounce.